Hello, Bugs and Cyber Tape. Hello, Bugs and Cyberspace viewers. Wish that there was a little bit more light here in this spot, but I wanted to put up a different backdrop than I normally do. I don't know how to play the piano, but this was my dad's piano when he was a kid, and it's sort of traveled with me from house to house for a while now. I would like to learn to play the piano. I don't know that I ever will, though. It's always really fun when he comes to town or when somebody else who knows how to play the piano comes over and plays it, though. And it sounds really good in here because the acoustics of this particular room are really good. I have a variety of things to show you today, but uh, this is going to be my Friday upload. And I don't really have a contest planned for this week. Normally every week on Friday, I will upload a new contest, but I have some other things going on this weekend. And so I won't really have time to participate myself in the running of a contest. And so I'm throwing up this video here for you guys. And we're gonna look through uh, some of the things that I've talked about in prior videos. Um, just kind of uh, catch up on a few things that were topics in previous videos. But before I do that, uh, this is sort of a milestone moment for me personally and for this channel. This is actually my 100th video, 100. And I started this channel, I think, back in, I think it was October of 2018. Yeah, so it's been a little bit over a year. I guess it's been nearly a year and a half. And uh, 100 videos. And th the reason, aside from that number 100 being, uh, you know, a solid number, is uh, that just this week I hit those thresholds here on YouTube which allow me to be monetized. And what monetized means is that if I'm approved for monetization, I will now be able to run videos on my ads. You may have noticed in the prior 100 videos, actually some of them I deleted um, for one reason or another, or um, I posted, but then uh, didn't make them visible. But this is actually my 100th video. And you will notice that you've never seen an ad on my video before. And that's not because I've chosen not to run ads on my video, videos. It's because I haven't been eligible. You have to meet a certain uh, number of thresholds. Uh, one of them is you have to have a thousand subscribers. And I was lucky to meet the number 1,000 subscribers relatively quickly, I think. Um, in the, what now, 12, 16 months. I think I probably hit that 1,000 subscriber mark somewhere in around eight months. And uh, the other threshold that you have to meet is you have to have 4,000 watch hours in a calendar year. So for the last 12 months, I have finally accrued 4,000 watch hours in the last 365 days. And because of those two things, I am now able to monetize this channel. And what monetization means, uh, aside from you guys having to put up with ads, if I am monetized, it means that I am now going to be compensated for the enormous amount of time that I put into these. Now, I won't lie, I love making the videos. It's always been one of my favorite things, many of you know that I have an Instagram channel with almost 80,000 followers on it now. And for the last two or three years, probably about three years now, I have been uploading videos to Instagram consistently almost every single day. I've backed off of that a little bit here since I've uh, been working harder on my YouTube channel. I think I made a decision back in uh, November, October, November to really start to 
uh, because I'd seen the progress I was making to put more time into my YouTube videos. And so that's caused me to fall back a little bit on some of the other social media platforms. But um, I honestly love the longer format videos here on YouTube. I really appreciate the interactivity of the subscribers, you guys. Um, the quality of comments is better. Um, and, uh, you know, on Instagram, even though I post very, very frequently, I don't get a lot of comments back. And, you know, it, often it's just like a, you know, a great video or <clears throat> maybe an emoji of some kind. Um, but you guys really respond to the questions I ask. And I know I run contests on this channel and everything, and that motivates you guys. And uh, I really like that reciprocal relationship we have. It's so much fun for me. And like I said before, um, because I have you guys as an audience, it actually um, encourages me or motivates me to go outside and to make more bug videos and to put more time into them to make them a higher quality, more informative um, videos. So thank you guys for that. And I also want to take a quick moment here to thank a few people who have been very helpful to me. In addition to all of you who are regularly commenting, I have, um, you know, sort of gotten to know some of you a little bit, even though we're all sort of relatively new here. Um, you know, I was joking earlier today again with uh, someone named Dee. Said, Wake up, Dee, because she had said in a prior video in the comments that she falls asleep sometimes. And I've gotten to know Wayne Nemec a little bit. He's a re been a regular customer on my website just for the last few months, I think. Um, but he's, he's commenting here on YouTube and participating. And I actually know a little bit about, you know, what he's up to, where he's, he's moving soon and stuff like that. And... Um, I, there's someone named Lois who comments frequently and I always enjoy her comments and just a whole bunch of other people uh, you don't know me and a quad insect and um, if I sat here I could probably think of a whole bunch of them but um, what I who I really want to thank are um, three people in particular and uh, uh, most of all I want to thank my dad uh, who has his own YouTube channel called JC Travel Stories and it was really through watching him build his channel over the last several years and to see um, you know, his, his follower base, his subscriber base grow and to see him have success, to see him get monetized, to hear about the actual real money he was making off of his YouTube channel and uh, just to see him documenting his day and his life there as he does his retirement in Mexico channel. My parents have lived down in Mexico for 20 years and his channel is half about that. For half of the year they live down there and then they rent their house out down there and they um, spend, you know, maybe five or six months, four to six months in the uh, desert down there around Quartzsite and in the southwest in their RV with hordes of other RVers and it's always fun to see these two sides of his life and so um, his channel has two different themes and it's interesting to see how the comments you know when he's down in Mexico change and then the other part of the year he's in this living this RV lifestyle and um, traveling from group to group and you know he's very well known within those groups and um, there's this whole YouTube community uh, down there and you know millions of RVs overwintering in the desert uh, snowbirds I guess and uh, it's just a really interesting lifestyle I could see myself living it someday maybe and I hope to take you guys with me uh, wherever I go because this channel my channel my life will always be built around bugs and so my dad uh, you know my whole life has been supportive and um, of my bug hobby um, my first trip to Arizona, he took me down there, and uh, that sort of changed my life. That's, uh, I had already had a bug website, but that's when I decided during that first trip, I'm going to start a bug business. And of course, I put my website up in 1997. My business has led me to this point, and my latest, and I would say greatest 
enjoyment within the bug hobby has been this YouTube channel. And so that's, that's my dad. Uh, thank you, dad. And I haven't mentioned his channel on here before. He's mentioned me on his channel a few times and probably sent me a few subscribers. Um, but uh, more subscribers have certainly come from Russ over at the Aquarimax channel. And I'll put a link down to these people and their uh, YouTube channels uh, in the caption in the uh, section below here so that you guys can check them out. But Russ is a hobbyist. He's been an online bug hobbyist for a very long time. There's a lot of veterans out there who have been around since the beginning. And Russ has been around for a very long time. His channel is about uh, bugs. It's also about reptiles and amphibians. And I think, uh, I think he does some fish too. Um, deals with a lot of aquatics. And it was uh, through his um, aquatics that I think I first met him. I had, well, I haven't shown you the shrimp. And uh, again, I don't want to carry their cage over there, over here, but I'll, I'll take you over there and we'll peek at the shrimp that I got from him years ago. Um, these Hawaiian shrimp. Uh, I uploaded a video to them on YouTube or on uh, Instagram recently, but I will uh, show you them here in a moment while we look at some other things. But I just wanted to take a few moments here and uh, really talk about Russ and how great his channel is. I really enjoy watching all of his videos. They're long format, which I really enjoy. Um, they're chock full of uh, great information. Um, I've kept isopods, I think, and no offense for us, but I, I think longer than he has. Um, yeah, he probably had him as a kid too and everything, but I think he mentioned in one of my recent videos that um, he didn't know the zebra pill bugs, for example, existed until he saw them on my website years ago. But Russ has certainly turned the corner, lapped me a few times over now and knows a lot more about keeping isopods and the species in the modern hobby than I do. And so I rely on Russ and his videos to inform me about the latest and greatest things happening in the isopod hobby, which has just boomed probably more than any other sector of the online pet bug hobbies. I mean, it used to be that tarantulas were king, and they probably still are. Um, the, the beetle hobby and the mantis hobby are fairly strong in this country. But um, the thing about the isopods is that they are not just interesting in their own right as colony pets for people who like pet bugs, but they're very useful also as cleanup crews in reptile tanks and amphibian tanks and other people who are setting bioactive tanks up um, maybe even just terrariums with plants in them. They add some isopods or some springtails into the tanks uh, to subjects that Russ is uh, very well versed in. And uh, that, that section of the hobby has just really exploded. And so Russ's channel is great for that. Um, he's also done some great videos lately on the topic of blue death feigning beetles. I've followed a few other people's work over the years. Um, I've been a dealer of the Blue Death Fainting Beetles for many years and for, as, since the beginning, the goal for everybody is always to captive breed them. And I've had uh, countless customers of them over the years and a few, of, few people out there have actually bred them now. Um, the Cincinnati Zoo, you can find their article online, and then a guy named Dean Ryder um, who sequenced to their genome a few years back. Um, he also had success in reproducing them in captivity. And then uh, my friend Oren McMonagall also, uh, he was actually the first of anybody that I personally know who was able to reproduce them in captivity in limited numbers. And there is a book on the website on that topic. Although um, I would highly encourage you to watch Russ's video because he is really breaking it down for all of us in video format with really great setup um, tank information and incubation information 
Uh, he's got something called a hovabator. I watched in one of his recent videos, never knew that word before, but I guess it's an incubator of sorts for reptiles or amphibians. And he's using that to maintain a consistent temperature for the blue death veining beetles once the larvae get to a couple inches long and then they, in order to pupate, need warmer temperatures. So, um, I probably won't be replicating uh, the work he's doing there because he's doing such a great job with it. So um, that's Russ, so check him out, Aquarimax. And uh, one other person here uh, who has a YouTube channel who has been very supportive of me and I just wanna give him a quick shout out here because um, I, I assume that there's probably a few uh, other regular people who follow me who have YouTube channels but I haven't really gotten to know them yet or popped over to see, you know, what's going on with their channel. I have done that with a few people and I do frequently click on people's names, um, but it seems that, you know, what do I have, like 2,600 uh, subscribers now? Seems more often than not when I click on them, you know, someone, they're not really, they're here to consume content rather than to create content. But uh, Wally, Wally from Supreme Gecko is another person who pops into my channel a lot and uh, comments and I watch his videos too. Um, I just really appreciate you Wally and uh, I know you do a lot of work with Russ. I saw you moderating his live stream uh, chat here recently. And uh, just, he's a really great YouTuber, you guys. Check him out and support him, please. He does a lot of videos on isopods too, and he uh, has a lot of good information. And so I watch his and Russ's videos regularly, every time they upload one, actually, even if it's not about, um, about bugs, I still watch them uh, out of support to them. And just because I really find those guys entertaining and I like to spread myself out a little bit. And networking here on YouTube is really important if you're going to have a channel um, to form relationships with people. And if I'm to get monetized here, um, if it happens, I'm crossing my fingers that it does because it could be a life-changing experience for me. Um, the relationships that I build with people, not just you, my subscribers, but the other YouTubers, um, it takes us all a long way working together um, to uh, promote each other and to promote the hobby that all of you are also here for. So with that, I'm going to uh, show you some bugs and talk about a few things here that we may have talked about in prior YouTube videos. And the first one here is something that I talked about a couple months ago. And it's also something that I collected when I was in Arizona back in late July is when I, this specimen first came into my life. And if you guys are regular uh, viewers, you may have an idea for what I'm about to show you. I'll give you one other hint. They normally only live two weeks in captivity. And yet this specimen here, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, seven months this thing has been with me and you. And uh, let's see if I can take this in a little bit here. This right here is the camel spider, wind scorpion, that has been alive all this time. It's just amazing to me. I think I'm gonna stop the video and turn the flash on here. It's really hard for me to talk into the camera with that flash uh, beaming in my eyes, but in order to see this, we'll stop it for a moment. Here's the little guy or girl. Can you believe it? Seven months. I don't know if that's a record or not, but we check on this thing a couple times a week here and it's just so amazing. And I, I wish I could tell you what the secret to this one's longevity is, but I have no idea because I swear I've kept it like every other one. It's so crazy. And it doesn't have a really high metabolism. These things are sort of famous for having a, a high metabolism. But this one here, I swear it, 
refuses food most of the time. So there it is. An update on the camel spider, also known as a sun spider, also known as a wind scorpion. And this one here is a Scytodes spider, a spitting spider. And the reason that I'm showing this to you today is, and some of you may recall me saying this in a prior video, I have never been able to get a spitting spider, been able to document a spitting spider spitting on its prey on video. I've had these off and on for many, many years, and I've never been able to do it. And very recently, I finally got the best footage. It's not perfect footage, but it's the best footage I've ever managed to get of one spitting on its prey. And so I'll be sharing that video with you guys very soon. And so I show you this one here as a little preview for a video to come. Next, we have a very young emperor scorpion. Have you guys ever seen a young emperor scorpion before? Surely you are familiar with the large adult ones, famous black scorpions. I know Wayne Nemec had recently requested that I make a video about scorpions. And you know what? I actually can do something else kind of cool here because I do have a black light right here. I can show you what happens when you shine a black light onto a scorpion. They fluoresce like this. I'm going to turn the light off so you can really get a good look at this. Now there's still a flash there on my camera, so you can still see that my hand is... Of course, the scorpion is in a difficult place here. There we go. So when I'm out in the desert, as I will be again very soon, and we come across a scorpion, they fluoresce like this. Isn't that amazing? How bright they look. And I can light them up with this particular light from 20 feet away. Now, I won't be seeing emperor scorpions where I'm going out into the desert here very soon again, but I will likely find some other scorpions. And on to the next bug. This one here, a little bit of a tease. You guys probably remember me telling you that I had three species of vinegarins, all three of the U.S. species of vinegarins. And I haven't made that video yet. It's a video that I'm still very excited to make at some point. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview here. This is Mastigoproctus floridanus. This is a Florida vinegarin. And you can see that it's a juvenile, a very small one. And its tail is quite pale. And often their pedipalps will be a little reddish. Pedipalps are those two claw-like appendages up front there. And perhaps you can see that unlike scorpions that have what looks like pinchers, the claws the pedipalps on these actually consist of three parts. And so it's kind of like this instead of <laughs> this. I'm not very good at being a vinegar in, apparently. Or maybe I was having trouble with the scorpion part. So a very young vinegar in. Now I've done a couple videos on vinegar ins here on YouTube already, but you guys can definitely look forward to that video where I showcase all three U.S. species of vinegarins. It hasn't been too long, only I think two years now, since they were classified, reclassified 
separated split into three species. For the majority of my life, they were thought only to be one species, Mastigoproctus giganteus, but the Florida one, and then one from parts of Arizona were determined to be distinct enough to be split off from the main species. And, oh, let's talk about this headlamp here a little bit too. Let me back this off a little. Um, this is a headlamp that I'll be taking down into the desert with me. I'm actually headed down to the California desert and I'm gonna take you guys with me. And I'm gonna do that very soon. And I'm very excited because uh, not only is it like 75 degrees down there, I gotta stop the camera and turn that light off. It's just flashing so brightly in my eyes. Um, before I do that, let me say that if I do get monetized here on YouTube, um, I applied for it. It takes 30 days for them to let you know whether you qualify. Um, if I do get monetized, I'm going to invest in some sound and uh, especially lighting uh, so that I can uh, not have to, it, like, I get this floater, you know, the, the light floater after I look at the camera. So that's something that I'm looking forward to putting back into the channel for you guys. Oh, that's much better, even though I have the floater there. But uh, I was saying that I'm going down to the desert and I'm taking you guys with me. And one of the things I'm most excited about, besides the beautiful 75 degree weather down there and the opportunity to, for the first time in, well, my last trip, uh, you guys saw the Catherine Creek video back in September or wherever. Uh, we had gone, you know, a couple hours east of Portland, Oregon here to a place called Catherine Creek. Um, but before that, it was my July-August trip to Arizona. And uh, it's been a long time now. It's February. And uh, I'm just excited to get back out and look for bugs. And bug season is starting down there a little earlier than it does in other parts of the country. So I'm going to be in um, the area of Yuma and then uh, about an hour west of there out in the desert. So, uh, oh, and uh, I'm going to be down there with my parents where they are snowbirding and uh, staying with them for a few days, maybe doing a little camping um, or, or uh, sleeping in their RV with them. Not really sure. Haven't figured out the sleeping accommodations just yet, <laughs> but that trip is happening soon and my dad has a drone. And so it's gonna be really awesome to incorporate um, some drone footage of the landscape into uh, my upcoming videos from that trip. I hope I see lots of bugs, but um, I'm gonna take you with me. We're gonna see some beautiful desert footage and uh, I'm gonna talk about the things that I see and we're just gonna look around for stuff like we did on the recent walk down to a local park here in Portland where I found that firefly and showed you some of the things that were just out there to greet us that particular evening. Um, uh, I really like drone footage. I love watching drone footage on YouTube when anybody goes anywhere. You don't wanna to put too much of it on probably because maybe people get bored of it, but it mesmerizes me. I, I find it so fascinating to see the drone, uh, the drone perspective on the area that you're collecting in, for example. So look forward to that. Um, and I have this piece of equipment here uh, that I'll be taking with me. Got a main light and then another version of the light that really focuses a beam down instead of like a wide angle. And then there's the black lights here, and then there's kind of a super bright, they all came on kind of thing, and then a blinking one. So this is a rechargeable, this battery pack right here, I got a plug, it plugs into. And these things are just so useful. Um, you keep both hands free. Uh, you got the black light setting if you're looking for scorpions. Um, and it just, it's really bright. Uh, the battery lasts for a couple hours and I have some backup headlamps too, but, um, this is a brand that I really, really like. Uh, it's called X Balog. You can see it there. And I think I got this off Amazon or eBay. 
Um, not really sure, but uh, so far out of all of the headlamps I've used, this is my favorite one. So um, in a few moments here, we're going to pick the contest winners. Uh, I might pop downstairs and poke around to see if I can show you a few more things, give you updates on a few more things. Um, I, I pulled my backpack up here too, uh, kind of just getting it ready for the trip. Um, you, you hear that? Those are bug vials. <laughs> show you what I got in here. Um, I got a whole sleeve of these two ounce containers. Uh, it's better to bring too much than too little. Got some different size containers there. Um, this one seems to have some stuff in it already. Um, let's see. Got some other larger ones here. You never know what you're going to find or how big it's going to be. And then the main rattling that you hear in here are these, um, I think these are 20 or 25 dram vials. And uh, some slightly larger sized ones. You can see this one has a crack in it. It's very used. Used it many times. Um, it's always good to have a couple Ziploc bags. Not sure why, but had to use them in the past for one thing or another. Uh, this one here has a label on it. It says hackle mesh. I must have had a hackle mesh weaver spider in there at one time or another. Let's see what else we got in here. We got some eight ounce cups. So good to have a variety of sizes along with you. Um, I also have these little micro centrifuge vials. If I find some specimens that I want to preserve in uh, alcohol, little tiny soft body things. Um, I, I do a lot of collecting for researchers and a lot of times before I'm going on a trip, you know, I'll have let some people know and they say, you know, I've been looking for this or that, or I just have relationships with people going back a couple decades. And um, I often just send them bugs for free. Um, uh, a recent example, I don't know if I mentioned this before, uh, I sent some roaches off to some researchers who are studying the um, mitochondrial or DNA relationships between species. And um, so I'm always, I'm always uh, kind of collecting for some other people while I'm out and about, um, and more so than I do for myself. I'm mainly going down to visit my parents slash make videos for you guys. And so I'm very excited about that. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Um, a couple other necessities that I tend to take. This is a backup. Um, I take all the videos with my iPhone. Every video you've ever seen on my channel uh, has been taken with my iPhone, unless I added in some clips from way back when that were actually lower quality. So this will give me, I don't know, like three or four extra hours of battery charge there on my um, my iPhone. I have an iPhone XS. You see it's 99%. The little light just came on. That'll turn off again in a second. Um, I actually have another one of those, but it's plugged in downstairs right now. Um, a couple other essential things right here. I have my favorite spoon. This is very important. It's kind of long, it's narrow, it gets in places, you know. Um, I have another spoon, very thick spoon. See the dirt on it? Very good for digging in certain settings. And I always bring two pairs of these forceps. This is the length that I like. Um, I feel like I have a lot of control with ones this length. Uh, you'll see the 10 or 12 inch tongs sometimes. These are just perfect for me right here. And I like the bent edge. Um, I really get into those tight places with these. So I always bring two of those because I typically lose one at some point during the trip or I'm with somebody who wants to lose my second pair. And uh, last but not least, um, oh, one second to last, uh, got some, uh, some latex gloves here because you just never know what you're gonna get your hands into. And then this here may be the most important thing. Not necessarily for me, but when you're with other people, this here, you guys know what this is? This is absolutely essential. I mean, I don't think it was mentioned in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe. I think that was a towel, but this is toilet paper. Very important because you just never know. Right, Jesse Green? 
So there you go. I think that's it. I got one more pocket here, and I know what goes in there. Another uh, battery backup pack. And so another thing I do is I keep a plastic bag in there, or maybe a second backpack or bag. And if I am collecting things, then I have somewhere to put them. But more often than not, I'm not spending a lot of time in one location. I'm instead um, driving for a bit. I see something that looks a little bit uh, curious or interesting about a habitat. Maybe it's uh, the rocks have changed or the vegetation, the plants have changed, a little bit of water. Maybe it's just been, you know, 30 minutes and I'm like, well, it's not any different here, but we've covered some territory. I mean, it's a weird thing. Like I've gone out looking for blue death fainting beetles, for example, and you'll go for miles and miles and miles. And, you know, an hour of all the exact same looking habitat, not find a single one. And then boom, you find a pocket of them. And then you go down the road three minutes, not a single one again for miles. It's a very interesting thing. So um, generally I will, you know, maybe collect a few things and uh, it'll be enough, you know, that I can keep them in some of these pockets right here. And then I get back in the car and I unload those few vials um, into, you know, you often a cooler when you're traveling in the desert um, the car will get very warm while you're out there. So sometimes I have some ice packs inside of a cooler and that helps to keep the bugs um, alive. So that's my backpack. And uh, I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Walked down there to a cold room where I keep this. It gets a little bit of heat, but not as much. You can see that um, longhorn beetle is still doing well, as is our firefly. And then finally, I was amused to see that the beetle, some of you who watched the video when I made the firefly video recently, I'll pop a card up above, may recall that I had dropped a beetle, this helops, a tenebrionid beetle and I dropped it down on the deck here and I couldn't find it and I had sort of assumed it could only have fallen into this cup and that I might find it again later and even though I've looked in this container a few times recently never saw it well there it is that little black beetle and funny enough as I'm walking up here where are you there's another one another shiny Helops, a local Tenebrionidae family beetle here in the Portland area. Pretty cool. And I'm just about to start the overall video for you guys here and was just gathering some supplies and getting prepared. <sighs> Pretty chilly out here and as usual I'm in shorts and a t-shirt and not uncomfortable. All right, see you again in a minute. All right, it's time to pick winners from the last contest. Oh, before we do that, I forgot to show you guys the bugs from a recent video. You can see the firefly back here, still in there, still doing pretty well. Kept him in that colder room, and so seems to be doing just fine. And you guys saw when I was outside a little bit ago that the other two beetles were still in there too. Well, I just kind of wanted to tie up the video and mention that again. And now we're going to pick the winners. And I had uploaded this video the other day it was this one here, the Arizona Bugs in Cyberspace, Arizona Insect Documentary and Entomology. Uh, five days ago, last Friday, I do a contest, as you know, almost every Friday. I'm taking a week off this week because I'm very busy with some other things, but uh, we'll do it again the following Friday for sure. And now I'm going to click through here. Gonna hit pause on the video. Gonna copy the URL here. 
And uh, just to review what the prizes were for that contest last Friday, we had uh, the first place prize, as usual, is a $30 gift certificate to shopping on my website, shop.bugsandcyberspace.com. And generally, if you win, you just contact me through Instagram or through my website, and we'll just arrange it. It's not anything real formal. We just, you know, send each other a couple messages back and forth and figure out what you want. That's a $30 value, and I cover shipping in addition to that $30 worth of product, live bugs, whatever you want from the website. And uh, the second place prize was a copy of Invertebrates Magazine. I have a brand new copy of Invertebrates Magazine here. Uh, this is put out by Orrin McMonagall from Elytra and Antenna. And this is their latest issue. Just got some new ones in. I generally have a few different issues available for these contests, by the way. So if you don't want this one, if you want one about tarantulas or something, I have some other copies that you guys can select among if you're the winner. But this particular one has some articles about uh, Uticella, these beetles back here, as well as uh, a species of Eliotes. I think it was Eliotes spinipes, yeah. And uh, Warren has been keeping, I know, because uh, many, many, many years ago, I used to get these from him. Uh, it's probably the largest darkling species in the United States. And when he, Oren writes an article, I mean, he's, he's, he's so detailed. I mean, the, he, this is the size of the head capsule width by Instar. <laughs> so he's got the measurements here, 0.3 millimeters, and then it goes up to 4.8 to 5 millimeters. I mean, this is detailed. And a lot of the information that you read about for this particular species of darkling applies to other species of darklings too. This is an invaluable resource in Vertebrates magazine for us pet bug hobbyists. And Oren's been doing it for, I think, 20 plus years now. Uh, and I often say it's a labor of love and it's really great to support his consistent hard work through a subscription to Invertebrates Magazine. You can purchase it through his website that I mentioned a moment ago or through my website, shop.bugsandcyberspace.com. Uh, he has a comparison photo here between Tenebrio, Molitor, Eliotis, Subnitans, Zo Zoophobus, Morio, and Spinippies. Uh, you guys are uh, familiar with the mealworm beetles that were mentioned there. And then just some really great photos in here. Um, and then it, there's also an article in here about Porcelio expansus, the beetle juice isopods, including uh, pictures of the orange form here, and uh, just a great magazine. Uh, just, I mean, I have stacks of them downstairs, uh, old issues, and uh, sometimes if I'm having a little trouble sleeping, um, I'll just pop one of those open and... Uh, you know, if you haven't read one in a few years, it's like reading it again the first time. I love it. Third place prize was this sticker. Um, the white backing peels away. It's a an emperor scorpion. And I showed you the baby emperor scorpion a little while ago. Much paler in coloration than when they get older. And so now I'm going to copy this website address. We're going to come in here to the random number picker. And we're going, oh, no, that's down here. Random number picker, random comment picker. And it's going to filter out the duplicate users so everybody has an equal chance of winning. And so from this page over here, we had how many comments? Where does it say? 81 comments. And many of those were me replying to people. I'm obviously not going to win the contest, <laughs> but um, it's going to pick through everybody here that participated in the comments. Thank you very much to all of you. Um, this will tell us how many people, there were 33 people who participated in this contest. And uh, thanks to each and every one of you for participating. I really enjoyed 
uh, your answers to the questions I asked. My questions were uh, for you to tell me one of your favorite places to see nature, what you look forward to about in the springtime, and then one interesting insect you see in your yard or neighborhood each year. And um, I read every single comment and I replied to every single one. Your comments and your experiences ex uh, really inspire me. Okay, there's one I missed. Sorry about that, giraffes like donuts 21. <laughs> But um, you may have posted that actually after the uh, midnight cutoff. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Um, it's going to sort through the three, um, the 33 of you. And I'm going to hit the start button. And the first one we're going to select a winner for is third place. We're going to go in reverse order. So um, when I click start here, it's going to pick somebody. And you are going to win the Emperor Scorpion sticker. Here we go. Filtering through all the names. And the winner is Audrey L, who said that her backyard is her favorite place to experience nature. I always love that. It's the closest place. It's the place where you get to go out there the most frequently. And so you're more likely to make observations, you know, sort of seasonally, new things coming in all the time to the backyard. And, um, you know, what you see in uh, May may not be the same thing that you see in April or in June. It's always very interesting to be able to be in proximity to a particular spot and to make the observations as the season goes on about how things change, the plants, the animals, especially the insects. So, and then she said she's going to be visiting more parks and camping spots this spring and that jumping spiders are her favorite things she's seen in her yard. They're so adorable and fun to study. 100% agree. Audrey L, please contact me. And we will go now to the next person here. How do we do that again? Um, usually there's a little button here. Pick another winner, there it is. All these ads and things, so many things to click. Link, 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 link. Here we go, pick another winner. This is for the second place prize, the magazine issue. And here we go. Sorting through, I see some names in there. I saw you power hobo there for a second. Jingles Roth is the winner of this copy of the magazine, who said, um, through participating in this contest, he commented, I love being in the woods and always look under logs to see if there are any bugs or snakes. This spring, I'm looking forward to going outside and looking for insects and going camping. In the spring and summer, I'll see some monarch butterflies lay their eggs. And two years ago, I hatched them and raised them until they were adults. And I said in my comment reply to him that that's not an experience that I'd had before. I've never seen um, a monarch butterfly go through the life cycle like that. I've only ever seen maybe one or two of them here in Oregon and not since I was sitting next to the butterfly bush outside my parents' house, my house, when I was a kid. Uh, fond memories and a very special moment to see the famous monarch butterfly, a very tattered specimen, land on the same bush that I spent the majority of my childhood next to. And last, we will pick the first place winner for the $30 gift certificate to shopping at shop dot bugs and cyberspace dot com. Here we go. Winner for the grand prize is Jackie Robinson. You won last time. See, it pays you guys. It pays to play because there were only 33 people that participated in this contest. And now I don't remember how many participated last time. Maybe not quite as many, but Jackie, you're raking them in. Uh, and she literally just got three blue death fainting beetles. In fact, I shipped them earlier today. They won't even be to her until Friday. So Jackie, congratulations again. Thank you so much for being a regular participant in these contests. Your comments were, whether it be bighorn sheep, jack bunnies, horned toads, or a California king, Joshua Tree always surprises me with its wildlife remix. Now, I'm going to be right down in that area funny enough very, very soon. Um, I, may, I won't be in Joshua Tree Park, but I will be in the vicinity, and you guys are going to learn all about that because you're going to be seeing the videos here real soon. 
Love days getting longer, flowers blooming, and can't miss the bug fair at Natural History Museum in Los Angeles. Definitely recommend 1000%. I've never gone to that. People have been mentioning it to me for so many years. I've always wanted to go. Maybe this will be the year. Jackie, please comment down below and tell us when that is. And you obviously know how to contact me um, because we just did this. <laughs> and then finally, uh, mantids seem to be a theme and it's interesting to see how their abdomen shapes and colors vary there in her area uh, where she lives. And so thank you three for your participation. Thank you all for your participation. I'm really inspired by your comments. Um, it's always really neat to read about the experiences people are having with bugs, the subject that I love, in different parts of the country, at different ages, you know, through time, childhood memories, things you saw this year, things you are looking forward to seeing later this year, stuff like that. So thank you all very much, and I'll see you guys again here on YouTube. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.